All right, let's dive right into the video and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Today is a very exciting video as we're going to be talking about after playing more than 200 hours, I'm pretty sure with this guy, the Pico 4, whether it really is good value for the money or whether you should wait maybe another few months for the Apple headset or the Oculus Quest 3 or other VR headsets which are supposed to be coming out in the pipeline in 2023, including the PSVR 2. So let's dive right into this. The Pico 4 has been unveiled for a few weeks now and is available in selected countries in Europe as well as Korea, Japan, Malaysia recently launched and next week or in a few days time, in fact, we'll be launching in Singapore. The benefits of the Pico 4 and what really sets it apart from its competitor, including the Oculus Quest 2, is the fact that the lenses are using a brand new technology called pancake lenses. And the resolution is 2160 by 2160 per eye, so that is very high resolution. This means that the sweet spot when you put the VR headset on is also very good. You don't have to worry so much in terms of things going blurry on the side. Although if you do you know, happen to turn your eyes in order to see around that it is possible that on the edges it will look also a little bit blurry, but the sweet spot, as I mentioned, is very clear for the most part. It also means that the clarity of the actual colors are very clear, and also there is no what we call color bleeding, meaning that the pixels will not show any red or green or blue or yellow around the edges. Everything will be absolutely absolutely crisp sharp. So the Pico 4 can come in two different sizes. One is the 128 gigabyte of memory and the other one, which is 256 gigabyte. Now let's remember also that 20 gigabytes is eaten up straight out of the box by the operation the OS, excuse me. So, you know, you'll be left with 100 and also 220 gigabytes after you power it on and, you know, to install all your various different games. Now, what really is also quite good, of course, is the form factor. Comparing it to the Oculus Quest 2 or other VR headsets, which are around, around the same price, I would say, you know, they're all very much front heavy. But with the Pico 4, well, the battery is placed at the back and the rest is placed at the front. Now it does make it around 600 grams, about 580 in fact, including the strap, excluding the strap, it is under 300 grams. But because the battery is at the back, comparing it, for example, to the HP Reverb G2, which is a PC VR headset and is equally very light, it does feel slightly more front heavy after, let's say, half an hour or 45 minutes of use because all the stuff, all the good stuff, is positioned at the front compared to the Pico 4, which is split in two. Now, Pico does belong to ByteDance, so there will be the same kind of issues that you would have with, of course, the Oculus Quest 2 when it comes to the privacy settings and all the various different data points that are being recorded by the user. Now, personally speaking, I'm not aware of how this data is being used or whether indeed it is being recorded in the first place. But if we look at articles from the mainstream media or the mainstream, excuse me, media, then, you know, at the end of the day, the Oculus Quest 2 can record up to 20,000 data points of its users every single 20 minutes or more than that now, I would imagine, since the Quest Pro especially, as it has facial feature tracking things as well. The good thing is that you will not be required to have a ByteDance nor a TikTok account in order to power your Pico 4, so there's no worries there. However, if you do want to browse your favorite TikToks, you can use the app inside of the Pico 4 as it comes native as well. Now, the movie theater that comes with Pico at the moment, honestly speaking, is extremely basic. So when we compare watching movies inside of VR using a standalone VR headset, the Oculus Quest 2 definitely wins there because it has other apps including, including, excuse me, Skybox and also Big Screen. And Big Screen enables you to watch a variety of different movies in a variety of multiple different rooms and environments. And you can actually meet other people, socialize and pick and choose every single seat that you want to sit on. Not to mention the fact you can throw popcorn inside of the room at other people or tomatoes or 
what have you not. Inside of the Pico 4, the movie theater is extremely basic. The environments that you can choose aren't very many there. You can't also choose the actual seat that you want to sit on. And also the graphics inside of the movie theater, honestly speaking, are not great. They're quite blurry, in fact other than maybe the movie theater itself is kind of okay, but you can only go to the front, the middle, or the back. So there's a lot of work to be done there by ByteDance and Pico before they can rival other headsets, including Meta, when it comes to watching media, for example. The library, however, is filling up pretty nicely. If we compare ByteDance, Pico, or Pico before it was ByteDance, you know, the library at the time, a year ago, wasn't so filled. It had a very few amount of games, but since ByteDance have come on the and pumped in 1.5 billion with a huge B into Pico. I have to admit that, you know, the library is filling up very, very nicely with a lot of different variety of games, which you can also find on the Oculus Quest 2. In fact, there are close to 80 games now inside of the Pico 4 compared to Oculus Quest 2, which has more than 150. So it still has a long way to go. But as I mentioned, you will be able to find your favorite titles, including Arizona Sunshine, Affected the Manor, Lost Abyss, Private Property, Last Labyrinth, and of course, non kind of Halloween things or horror things like Rec Room, All in One Sports, Space Pirates, Ultimax, Real VR Fishing, Smash Drums, Ragnarok, O Shape. I mean, there are just so many, so many different apps to be able to enjoy on the Pico 4. I have to say that it does give you a big mm, want or let's say a good excuse to get into VR. But should you upgrade if you have the Oculus Quest 2 and then buy the Pico 4, that will be I'm not quite sure because if you've pumped a lot of money inside of your Oculus Quest 2 and the only difference for you is that you don't want to have a meta account, then of course, by all means, do it. But if privacy is an issue to you, then what's the point in going from one company that's going to be using all your data versus another company who is most undoubtedly probably doing the same, although I cannot confirm this, then, you know, in that case, no, that would not be the best excuse for moving from one platform to the other platform. If, however, privacy wasn't an issue and you just wanted to have better graphics, then yes, Getting the Pico 4, of course, undoubtedly will give you a better experience than the Oculus Quest 2. However, when the Oculus Quest 3 comes out and it is better than the Pico 4, if Pico have not unveiled the Pico 5 by that time, or if there isn't a better VR headset that comes out in the meantime as well, then you're just going to be hopping from one platform to another platform and spending the same amount of money on every single platform, which means you're going to be spending more money for the same games, just experiencing them on different VR headsets it then what's the point so perhaps if you have an oculus quest 2 already or you're someone in pc vr and you're not quite sure uh you know which platform to use although that's a different debate altogether for oculus quest 2 users maybe you should wait another year just to be sure although in the meantime you will probably also spend more money on your quest 2 making it even harder by that time in order to make that switch now in terms of tracking the pico 4 definitely is a beast it doesn't lose tracking most of the time it seems that other influencers who have been doing archery games have perhaps had some issues because of course putting the controllers at the back there are four cameras on the actual headset which are placed on the front here and then one will be at the middle for the pass-through and we'll talk about this in just a little minute. So if you do put your controllers at the back or behind the actual headset, you will undoubtedly lose some tracking there. And compared to other VR headsets, it is exactly the same. There currently isn't other VR headsets that use um, specific all-in-one cameras on the actual headset, which enable you not to lose the actual tracking, other than the new Oculus Quest 2 controllers, which have cameras on their own and do not require the headset in order to know where they actually are. So that will give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of the tracking if you want to do things and putting your hands, for example, at the back of your back. Or if you're using, of course, base stations, but base stations are not yet 
integrated with the Pico 4. So you need to have PC VR for this and hook it up to Steam in order to use a base station. So PC VR is a different topic, which I will touch on in just a moment. The audio in the Pico 4 is actually pretty good. I have to admit the speakers are positioned inside of the actual strap here. It doesn't really disturb other people when you're playing next to your parents or your family or your friends or things of that sort. However, if you want more personalized audio, you will need to get, well, it's not recommended to use a Bluetooth because you will undoubtedly get some latency about one to two seconds depending on the brand and also depending on whatever else it could be. So you will need to get a adapter, which is basically a USB-C to 3.5 mm jack adapter to plug in your headphones in the headphone jack and then put it inside of the Pico 4 itself. Now that means that it will use up more battery as well. So the Pico 4 is supposed to last for 2.5 to 3 hours. Although honestly speaking, it's never lasted that long for me. It's always lasted around two hours or just before two hours and then it will shut down. It will cost more battery if you are using games, for example, like after the fall, which require a lot more RAM in order to power it. But if you are only watching movies, apparently, well, it should use up less battery. However, if you are going to put headphones on and you plug in the headphones using, uh, you know, the headphone jack, then it will use up more battery as well. So this will increase the amount, you know, or you will have less usage amount, excuse me, uh, when you have your Pico 4 powered on. However, when you're using PC VR and you hook up the USB-C um, 3.0 cable from your PC inside of the Pico, it will also not charge the Pico whilst you are using it. However, the percentage will take longer to trickle down, meaning you will go from a two hour experience to perhaps a four or five hours, as I did a live stream very recently and do go and check out that video you'll see it's about four, three hours and a half four hours long and we had only used up about 30 to 40 percent of the actual battery itself so it will definitely last much longer when you have the USB-C 3.0 connected to your PC but how does it do in terms of the graphics now graphics wise of course with this headset you do not need a PC in order to power it everything is within itself so it's an all-in-one standalone VR headset which comes with all the apps as we mentioned before most of them the graphics you will find if you've never tried VR before you will be absolutely happy absolutely fine if you're transferring from the Oculus Quest 2 or from a headset that is less good graphically for example the Oculus Go for example then you're definitely going to have a very good experience inside of the Pico 4 for sure if however you're hoping to upgrade from your HP Reverb G2 or your HTC Vive Pro 2 your Varjo or your Valve Index, for example, then you might be disappointed because there definitely is some compression issues with the graphics, both when using a virtual desktop, that means you're streaming wirelessly to the computer using a third-party software, or using also the wireless streaming software assistant by Pico itself, they're definitely not, you know, there are some compromises to be made there. And also when you're using the USB-C 3.0 cable from attached to the Pico to your PC streaming to Steam VR. There will also be some issues for games, for example, Half-Life Alex or Assetto Corsa or Automobilista 2, and most undoubtedly other sims that require a lot of RAM in order to power those experiences. Personally speaking, after 200 plus hours of trying out both the new Pico 4, the consumer version, which is this one here, and also the test headset, which I've featured on the platform before, I've never had any any issues in terms of the headset freezing, stopping, powering off, or just not wanting to power on, or any issues of that kind, or apps that just, you know, just don't work. I haven't had issues of that kind, although there were some issues with O-Shape, and this is more of a developer's issue as opposed to an actual hardware issue, so the developers need to simply update the O-Shape app so that there aren't any issues when you want to power it on inside of the Pico 4, but other than that, never had any problems with it I have to say it's been extremely consistent and you know so if you're worried about any those kind of issues then don't be because so far after every single OS update 
There just hasn't been any issues. What can I tell you? It just works all the time. The actual casting works very well too, although I have not tested the casting on the phone and the casting to a TV is actually not so great. There are some issues there. You do need to make sure your internet is extremely good, that your router is in at proximity of your actual headset as well. And it is better to enable also 90 Hertz and have Wi-Fi 6. If you have Wi-Fi 5, it is possible that casting to a TV, you may have issues. However, casting to a web browser is magical and you can then use that casting content to stream it live. Of course, if you're a content creator or also if you're doing events of some kind, you could just stream it to a laptop and then basically just hook up your laptop with an HDMI cable to a giant LCD screen as it was the case in Malaysia with the all-in-one sports and the badminton court there. That was absolutely amazing or also of course at Gamescon when there was the concert with Tribe XR it was all casted on the laptop also apparently using an HDMI cable there so that really seems to be the best bet when you're looking to cast to some media at this moment in time but I'm sure that in the future this will change as well some mixed reality experiences at this moment in time of the recording. Unfortunately, it is not available to do so. So all the experiences that you see on the Quest 2, although it has black and white pass through or on the Quest Pro, which has color pass through, you will not be able to experience these in the Pico 4 at this moment in time. And talking about the color pass through at this moment in time, also it is not super great. It will depend entirely on your lighting setup inside of your room. It is better to have it than nothing, of course, because if there's any sound going on outside or you just want to see what's going on for whatever reason, then all you have to do is quick tap double time a uh, couple of times excuse me on the side of your headset and you'll be able to see outside so that is actually quite good to have there but the quality inside it is quite wobbly there are some issues here and there so you know it's just not that great and also it is very distorted so to be able to use a headset to type on your keyboard as simple things as that it makes it very hard to be honest with you or trying to just pick up an object in front of you also makes it a little bit hard because everything is distorted so it's good to have but Still a lot of room of improvement to be made there, I have to admit, uh, in terms of this specific technology of the pass-through in color. Personally speaking, I'm pretty impressed as to how ByteDance have been investing in the Pico platform and the amount of things that they're doing, including all the various different virtual concert setups that they're doing in China at this moment in time, before they will bring this out into the more global consumer market. It is very strange. I do find, to be honest with you, that it is still not available in the US. And for me as a consumer, it doesn't really give me great confidence you know, until it's available in the US, which is the main dominant market for VR in today. Although they are looking to expand, of course, in Asia with Malaysia, Singapore, Korea, and Japan. But still, the fact that the US market is still missing, and also it's only a select few amount of countries available in Europe at this moment in time, might make me feel to keep in view the actual Pico 4 and perhaps wait until next year or the Pico 5 comes out or until they're actually available all over the world. But I can understand that at the end of the day, it can take a long time, a long process to be accepted in various different countries from all the different certifications that are required in those countries. And also, of course, let's not forget that ByteDance is a Chinese owned company and there could be some geopolitical issues there, making it tougher for them in order to be able to penetrate those other key markets, which is why, for example, Oculus or Meta are not yet marketing all the products in Asia at this moment in time, you still have to go via various different vendors who are purchasing them on the Amazon global store and then jacking up the prices in local Malaysia or Singapore markets, making it very hard to purchase it because the price is so high. So that is also possible as to why the Pico is not available in selected countries compared to the Meta where the Oculus is not available also in selected countries here in Asia. So 
But at the end of the day, it would give me more confidence if they were available in the US, that's all I'm trying to say. And it also gives them a much better stance in terms of competing with Meta in the world of VR dominance if, of course, they are available in the major markets in the US and other cities in Europe as well. So at the end of the day, should you just go ahead and purchase this Pico 4? Well, I can tell you that after 200 hours or probably more, I mean, I'm not exaggerating here, uh, of using the Pico 4, both both the UT2 test kit and also the consumer kit, which I've used now probably for a good 60 to 80 hours, this headset alone, then, you know, it is a good headset. It is a very good product. It's priced, I would say, very good, very reasonably, because of course they're not making, well, I don't know if they're making any money in terms of the cost price, but it is very cheap for what it is. And normally VR headsets, you know, Meta are the ones that have set the standards in subsidizing the pricing in not really making any money and selling it under perhaps cost price or just around the same price as what it costs them. A VR headset should by right be costing about 800 US dollars or 800 euros or whatever it might be and not 400 euros or 300 euros or 300 or 400 US dollars. It is just insane to be able to purchase this headset at these kind of prices no matter where you are in the world. So Oculus Quest 2 owners, if you don't care about privacy and you just want a better headset and you don't mind repurchasing, of course, the some of the same apps that you had in your Quest 2 and you just believe more that finally there is a better product, a better brand that's around, then go for the Pico 4. It is really that simple. And also, if you prefer that your data is managed by ByteDance instead of being managed by Meta, then it is a no-brainer, go for the Pico 4. However, it is very possible that within the next year, there will be a number of other VR headsets available. We know that PSVR 2 will be available soon. Apple will be releasing their own headset as well, although we're not quite sure of what the content will be like inside of that headset, of course. We also know that HTC have been teasing a new headset to come out. Valve have been teasing a new standalone, the first standalone headset to potentially come out within the next year also as well. And Pimax also are teasing their new standalone VR experience to come out and of course the guys from Sonya Space are also teasing their own headset to come out although the pricing of course who is going to be able to price their headsets at 400 US dollars or 400 euros or 400 Singapore dollars or whatever it might be that is another question because the other headsets coming out will most undoubtedly be priced higher than that, including the PSVR 2, which means you need the PSVR 5, uh, the PS5 to run your PSVR uh, 2, of course. So that's really what's going on here is battle of the prices as well as battle of the standalones. But give it four or five years from now, there definitely will be so many more brands. So I wouldn't say do you, should you buy, excuse me, the Pico 4 now? I think look at it more from a long-term perspective. Do you believe in ByteDance? Do remember that also they are promising a whole bunch of different things from, you know, the Pico worlds and also all the avatar systems and all these kind of different things. Are these going to come out? I personally know that they, of course, are working on all this kind of stuff. And I do believe that they will come out with them, of course. But is the quality going to be good? Is it going to be as good or as better or as worse than, for example, Horizon Rooms or Horizon itself and all these kind of different experiences? Is it going to be better, for example, the cinema than big screen eventually? You know, all these kind of different questions. Because as I mentioned before, the Pico movie film Theater isn't that great. So it's fantastic that they're promising on delivering all these kind of experiences, but is the quality going to be good? We won't know, of course, until they start to release all these different things in the future. So don't think so much should you get the Pico 4. The question is, should you get into the ByteDance or Pico ecosystem for the next four to five years? Or do you want to wait another year, stay with what you have before you start purchasing something? Or if you're new to VR and you've never experienced VR and you're looking to get a VR headset, then of course it's a no brainer get this but do be mindful that the company is owned by ByteDance as I mentioned before so do make sure you are comfortable before you make that purchase because once you've done it it will be harder for you after you have spent 500 or a thousand US dollars or euros of your own money in various different games although that's quite a lot of money will you be willing to repurchase those games in another headset in the future if let's say there's another competitor that comes around it's not a social media it doesn't take any of your data and use it for whatever purpose it might be those are the questions that you need to ask yourself as well but the pico 4 guys is a great headset great product very well priced so 
for sure I'm gonna carry on using it for now. All right guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. Really appreciate it. Smash the like so more people get to see this video. Hit the notification bell after you subscribe so you get notified of when I upload a brand new video coming very soon. In the meantime, you can watch this video or that video right there. All right, take it easy guys. Bye for now.